Uh, thanks, Daniel. Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, private circuits uh, modular approach. Uh, this is in joint work with uh, Yuval Ishai and Amit Sahai. So ideally, you want to uh, protect your computation against uh, external untrustworthy entities. Right? However, uh, this is not always the case. Uh, many studies have shown the existence of surveillance attacks, where, which actually extract sensitive information uh, from various devices. This sensitive information could include uh, things like your credit card details, as a number, and so on. And uh, this class of attacks in the literature has been uh, coined as side channel attacks. There are various types of side channel attacks studied in the literature. Uh, and in this talk, I'm going to focus on side channel attacks where the adversary obtains some partial information about the computation. Okay. So how do we actually protect our uh, devices against these side channel attacks? Uh, this question is not new. There is an entire area in cryptography that studies this, uh, these sort of questions. Uh, and this is, uh, this is the area of leakage resilient cryptography. Okay. So the goal in this area is to come up with cryptographic schemes that resist side channel attacks. And there are several uh, uh, sort of primitives studied in this area. And in this talk, I'm going to focus on one such problem, uh, which is to design leakage resilient circuit compilers, okay. which was originally introduced by Shai Saha and Wagner. So let me explain what this is. So first, let me explain what are circuit compilers. Circuit compilers allow you to uh, compile a circuit C into uh, a compiled circuit C hat. And this is accompanied with uh, the corresponding encoding and decoding algorithms. So the encoding algorithm allows you to encode an input X into uh, encoded input X hat. So the computation of C hat on X hat essentially emulates the computation of uh, C on X. And to recover C of X from C hat of X hat, we are going to use the decode algorithm. Okay. And here, crucially, we use the fact that the encode algorithm is probabilistic. OK, some remarks about uh, this definition. So we are only interested in the setting when C and C hat contain NAND gates. And uh, the case when C contains NAND gates is uh, without loss of generality, because you can convert any Boolean basis into NAND gates with constant overhead. And for when C hat, uh, when you want to uh, work with C hat for other bases, then you can actually extend uh, our results to this setting as well. Okay. And we consider, uh, we only consider the setting when the circuit compilation algorithm is deterministic. And the reason to study this is because we can use the circuit, the compiled circuit uh, in uh, multiple times. Uh, and there are no hidden trapdoors, so modeling uh, adversaries is also uh, very clean. And uh, we allow C hat to contain random bit gates. So by random bit gates, I mean is that uh, this is a gate where if you invoke it, you will get a random bit okay, as an output. Okay, so now let me explain what is leakage resilient circuit compilers. So the security experiment associated with this notion is as follows. So we have this computation C hat on X hat. So we have the values assigned to these uh, wires. Okay. So the adversary is allowed to submit a leak function. And this leak function operates on all the wire values in this computation. And it outputs uh, something, that, some short information. Okay. And uh, intuitively, we want that the adversary uh, doesn't get any information about uh, the input. So we don't care about hiding the circuit. We, uh, we allow the adversary to know the circuit, but we really want to hide the input uh, from the adversary. Okay. Okay. So now the question is, what sort of leakage functions can the adversary submit to the, uh, to su submit to the challenger? So there are two uh, categories you can consider here. So one is global leakage, another one is local leakage. In the case of global leakage, uh, the le leak is a function of the entire computation. So for instance, leak could potentially compute parity of all the bits in the computation. So in local leakage, the adversary has some partial view of the computation. So you can think of the computation as divided into blocks, and maybe he gets some subset of these blocks of computation. Okay. So there are many works that study both these uh, categories. So in the case of global leakage, there are, uh, let's say there are many works. And uh, some of these works resist attacks against leakage functions that are in low complexity uh, classes. Okay. 
for instance, uh, there are works that study uh, leakage resilient circuit compiler secure against AC0 and so on. Okay. In the case of local leakage, there are uh, two popular settings. One is uh, wire probing attacks, and another one is uh, split state leakage resilient circuit compilers. And in this talk, I'm going to focus on wire probing attacks. Okay. So what are wire probing attacks? So in this case, leak is just a projection function. So the output of leak is a subset of uh, wire values in this computation. So how is this subset chosen? Is this uh, chosen by the adversary, or is this uh, chosen from some random process? The answers to these questions lead to uh, different settings. So let me first focus on the worst case setting. So in this, uh, in this setting, the adversary uh, specifies a threshold t, and he is allowed to uh, get wire, any t wire values in the computation. And there are several works uh, that uh, study this, uh, this setting following uh, ISW. And in particular, many of these works have been studied by the chess community. And you can actually, uh, if you look at ISW, one of the motivations they provide for this problem is, uh, in some sense, devising MPC on silicon. It is, uh, you can think of it as applying MPC techniques to design secure hardware. Okay. And uh, in the recent years, uh, there is a growing interest in designing leakage-resilient compilers with uh, good randomness complexity. Okay. So let me define what randomness complexity here means. So the randomness complexity of a circuit compiler is nothing but the number of random bit gates. Okay. And a natural question to ask here is, how many random bit gates are needed for a leakage-resilient circuit compiler? Okay. And this is naturally motivated because uh, you, the randomness is a scarce resource, so you don't want your compiler to have too many random bit gates. So a few years back, Isha et al. studied this problem, and they showed, how, they showed a positive result, uh, which uses just uh, slightly more than t cube random bit gates. Right? Recall that t is the threshold associated with the compiler. So the natural question to ask here is whether uh, t power 3 plus epsilon is tight. Okay. And in this work, we uh, answer this question, and the answer is no. And in particular, we show the following result. Uh, there exists uh, leak-resilient circuit compilers for SI circuits and threshold t that resist t wire probing attacks. The size of the compiled circuit is S times polynomial in the circuit, uh, polynomial in T. And finally, the randomness complexity used in this compiler is only T power 1 plus epsilon. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, for worst case probing attacks. So let me move to a different setting, which is a random wire probing attacks. So in this setting, uh, recall that in the worst case setting, the adversary was, uh, could choose any T wires in the circuit. But in this case, uh, the adversary gets every wire value with some probability P. And in the ideal world, we want, uh, we want to show a simulator that can simulate this leakage given uh, only the circuit C. And we also allow for a small simulation error E. And this model is related to the noisy leakage model that was uh, studied in uh, many prior works. OK. So let me review the, the prior works in this, uh, in this area. And uh, the regime I'm interested in is, uh, is, is the case when P is constant and E is negligible. Okay. When I say negligible, it's negligible in the circuit size. Okay. And there are two prominent works in this regime. So the first one is by Aitai. Uh, this Aita showed the first construction in this regime. However, this, the construction is highly complex. Uh, at least I don't understand uh, the construction well. And uh, following Aita, uh, there was a work of uh, ADF, which actually, uh, among many other results, showed, uh, showed a simplification of Aita's result. But uh, this result still uses some heavy machinery. Uh, for instance, they use AG codes, expanders, and so on. I have to point out that even Aitha's results use some expander-based uh, tools in the construction. 
So in this work, we show a somewhat simple construction of leakage resilient circuit compilers in the same regime as studied in the prior two works. And, now, and in fact, we can actually show a concrete constant. It doesn't look that exciting now, but we hope that our approach can be used to improve this uh, constant. Yeah. OK. And uh, underlying our result is a simple composition-based approach that only uh, uses elementary tools, as you will see soon. OK. And uh, as I had mentioned earlier, we were only interested in the setting where C hat contains NAND gates, but you can actually uh, replace the NAND gates with large gates. And in this case, you can actually tolerate uh, probability arbitrary close to 1. OK. So we also study another model called leakage tolerance. So leakage in the model of leakage tolerance, uh, the input and decoding algorithm are identity functions. So the rest of the talk, I'll be mainly focusing on leakage resilience, but I will give the results we obtain in the leakage tolerance model as well. And the reason why we study leakage tolerance is because it's, uh, it implies leakage resilience. Okay. So the security notions is slightly tricky to define compared to leakage resilience. And the reason is that in this case, the adversary gets some fraction of the input and output. And so we need to factor this when we formalize the definitions for the worst case and the random probing case. Yeah. So as before, the worst case will be parameterized by T. And uh, we require that the simulator can simulate the leakage, even given T bits of input and output. So correspondingly, we can also define the probabilistic uh, setting, uh, the, the definition of the probabilistic setting. Uh, so here, uh, note that we also have this additional parameter P prime. And this P prime uh, determines the probability of leakage of uh, the input and the output. Yeah. And we correspondingly obtain uh, similar results uh, as uh, leakage resilience. So we can show a construction that has uh, the same randomness complexity as before. In fact, we even can show a lower bound that says that we require at least T random bit gates. So, so in that sense, this is tight. And for the probabilistic case, we can actually uh, show upper bounds and lower bounds. So uh, this P, which is the same as what I had written earlier, so you can show that any leakage, uh, leakage tolerant compiler can tolerate, uh, there exists leakage tolerant compiler that can tolerate any probability that is less than this. And uh, correspondingly, we can also show that if you want to tolerate uh, probability greater than 0.8, then there does not exist any leakage tolerant compiler. Okay. Okay. So let me explain the techniques used in this, uh, in, this, uh, in this work. So the goal for this talk would be to just stick to leakage resilient circuit compiler tolerating uh, random probing attacks. Okay? So this is what I'm going to uh, deal with for the rest of the talk. And the starting point to constructing this is uh, T out of N secure MPC protocol. By this I mean this MPC protocol tolerates T adversaries and N is the number of parties. So I'm going to view this MPC protocol slightly differently. Instead of viewing this as a protocol, I'm going to view this as a compiled circuit. So MPC protocol of a circuit C will be viewed as a compiled circuit C hat. So the, a party P2 will be viewed as a block of gates in this compiled circuit. And similarly, the communication ch channels between the parties will be viewed as the wires between dif these different blocks. So it's just a different way of viewing MPC. You can correspondingly also uh, define an intuitive security notion. So uh, a party being corrupted here corresponds to uh, leaking the entire block of P2 in this case. Okay. Just this viewpoint leads us to the first candidate of leakage resilient uh, circuit compiler. So you can think of uh, the compiled circuit C hat as just being an MPC protocol for C prime. So what is C prime? It takes as input shares of x, uh, reconstructs, computes C of x, and then shares C of x. Okay, that's it. Okay, so this is the this is a candidate leakage resilient circuit compiler. Okay, okay. So and what is the encoding and decoding? Is the trivial algorithms? The encoding just secret shares the input, and the decoding reconstructs the the output. Okay, so why is this secure? Yeah. 
So note that if at most T wires are leaked in the circuit, then the leakage can be simulated. And why is this the case? Because any uh, T wires being leaked is the same as any T parties being corrupted in the corresponding MPC protocol. And the MPC protocol guarantees that as long as at most T parties are corrupted, uh, things are secure. This is the intuition. So now we need to calculate what is the probability that more than T wires are leaked. And once more than T wires are leaked, then, then we can't do anything. This is, uh, this is why we need to incorporate this as a simulation error E. And by a simple turn of calculation, you can actually show that uh, the simulation error E is upper bounded by this much. So this looks complicated. So we'll just stick to the setting where these things are constant, P, C, and T are constants. In this case, the error will also be constant. This is great, but we really don't want a uh, leakage resident circuit compiler that only tolerates uh, constant simulation error. Right? So how do we go from constant to negligible? So to do this, we are going to start with a base gadget. Okay? So what is this base gadget? It's uh, another name for a leakage resident circuit compiler that has, uh, that's associated with constant probability P and constant error E0. Note that in the previous uh, slide, we just constructed such a base gadget. Right? So we are going to use this uh, base gadget to uh, achieve our result. Okay. So how do you reduce the error? So the idea is as follows. Again, start with a T out of N uh, secure MPC protocol. And now replace every gate in this protocol with a base gadget. Okay. So we have a NAND gate here, replace this with a base gadget. And somehow we stitch all the gadgets that are associated with these different gates. Okay. And whatever you get here will be the next gadget. Okay. And I'm going to call this gadget, resulting gadget as G1. Okay. Okay. So now why is the resulting uh, uh, the circuit compiler secure? And the reason is that as long as at most T based gadgets fail, then you can simulate the leakage. And the reason is the same as before. As long as at most T batch gadgets fail, that, is, that corresponds to uh, corrupting at most T parties in the MPC protocol, and then you can, uh, then you can successfully simulate. Okay. Okay. So now again, we need to calculate what is the simulation error in this setting. So, so in order to do that, we need to calculate what is the probability that more than T base gadgets fail. And the expression is uh, the same as before, except that you replaced P with E0 here, and E0 got replaced with E1 here. Okay. Okay. And by suitably setting the parameters, you can show that E1 is actually smaller than E0. So you have achieved some progress. Yeah. Okay. So now we showed that the error reduces, but we should also be mindful of how the size of the resulting compiler increases. And in fact, you can sh this is easy to observe. The size of the final uh, compiler here will be the size of the base gadget times the size of the MPC protocol. OK. So now we reduce the error a little bit, but it's still a constant. So how do we keep going forward? So we just repeat this process. Okay. So in the kth step, we are going to take a T out of N secure MPC protocol. And we are going to replace the NAND gate with the gadget obtained from k minus one step. So if you keep doing this, you realize that the size uh, is no longer small because uh, in each step, you are increasing the size of the gadget. And after k steps, this will be exponential in k, even when you only stick to constant size circuits. While this might seem worrisome at this point, let's look at how the error reduces. In fact, you can show that the error actually uh, reduces quite well. It is 1 over 2 power 2 power k. Right? So it's actually doubly exponential in k. So uh, this, is, uh, this is good for us. So just to summarize, what we have here is that when the circuit is uh, circuit of constant size, then the error, oh, sorry. then the error is something like at most 1 by 2 power 2 power k. 
and the size is exponential in k. Uh, so the size is still exponential, so we need to make sure it's polynomial in the circuit size. And to ensure that, we will just set k to be logarithmic in the circuit size. So at this stage, the error will be uh, negligible in the uh, circuit size, and the size of the gadget will be polynomial in the circuit size. OK, so note that all this while I've been saying circuit of constant size, circuit of constant size. So uh, what kind of circuits are we considering? So for now, let's just consider uh, NAND gates. So what we have so far is uh, leakage resilient circuit compilers for NAND gates with negligible simulation error and constant probability. Okay. This is the result we want, except that it's only for NAND gates. So how to go from NAND to arbitrary circuits? So what we do here is we start with this arbitrary circuit, which is comprising of NAND gates. And we will replace every NAND gate here with this uh, gadget. Okay? So this gadget is associated with constant probability and negligible simulation error. Okay? And then we figure out how to stitch these different gadgets together. Okay? Okay? So this is the resulting compiler. So one thing I didn't uh, explain is how to actually do this stitching, how to argue security when uh, these different gad uh, gadgets are interacting with each other and so on. Uh, so there are some comp uh, compositional issues that come up in this, uh, in this case. Uh, if you're interested to know more, I can ex explain offline. Okay. okay, so this was about uh, random probing attacks. So for worst case leakage, uh, we do something similar. In fact, the same approach works even for the worst case leakage setting, and the analysis is significantly simpler. And to show the randomness complexity result, what we do is we have this base gadget. We observe that this base gadget has what we call constant randomness locality. Uh, you don't need to know what uh, randomness locality uh, for this talk. And we observe that in every step, this randomness locality only increases slightly. So after k steps, the randomness locality is uh, some, some constant times k. And then note that we set k to be logarithmic in t. And there is a previous work that shows that any leakage resilient circuit compiler that has small randomness locality will, can be converted into another uh, uh, leakage resilient circuit compiler with small randomness locality, that's randomness complexity. Okay? And so we are going to use this result to get small randomness complexity. Yeah, so this is, that is the main idea. Uh, so let me conclude. So uh, we get uh, results in the leakage resilient and the leakage tolerant uh, settings. Uh, so in both of these settings, we consider two types of attacks. The worst case wire probing attacks and random wire probing attacks. So worst case probing, uh, wire probing attacks, we get uh, optimal randomness complexity result. And uh, for ra random wire probing attacks, we get a construction that is uh, significantly simpler than prior works. Okay.